Josiah was not a record keeper, but his memory was good. And in quiet times, prayer times, he remembered. Tents, often the same, hymns so familiar, hardworking, hungry faces, he loved them all. The benedictions, though, they held a special place. The altar calls, responses in crowds, or singles. Every torch and lantern lit light revivals. Now, excuse me, early torch and lantern light revivals. Now all electric. The folks still came, more repeated, more repeat revivals than ever. Often asked back, he took that to be good. So many revivals, so many friends. Many letters and several visits to Mary Ellen, Todd and the Bethel Chapel. Still walking town to town, though there are a lot more paved roads than before. The war was over. The soldiers were coming home. Lots of joy and happiness. Bigger collection showed folks were doing better. He was near Amarillo when he heard God saying he'd done enough, time to come home. No hesitation, clears a bell, time to rest. There were stops along the way, a crippled cowboy, a young war widow, scarlet fever, all amazing works of the Lord. The hardest of all were the goodbyes to Mary Ellen, Todd, and the Bethel Chapel congregation, prayer warriors, his spiritual family. He stood for the last time in the old Bethel Chapel before those beautiful faces, no words, some of the choir hummed softly, Josiah raised his weather-worn face, now tears stand, and said, I have no words to tell you this feeling in my heart, nor can I tell you of your value to me, but I rejoice knowing you already know the Lord has revealed it in our ministry. We have been as one. Between the children of God, we know God's love. It is my way to steal away, unseen, unheard, but I could not leave you without a farewell. You, my true brothers and sisters, have blessed me beyond my understanding. I rejoice to know I will stand at the gate and welcome you each one. Oh, what a joyous day that will be. So I will not say goodbye, but till we meet on that glorious shore. So many tears embracing. Mary Ellen and Todd so wanted to stay but he told them he felt called to complete the circle to the end where he started. At a 91 years old pace, Grit was three or four days away, or his prayer list at least twice. Todd, Todd stood in the middle of the road, tears running down his face, Bible in one hand, and waved until Josiah was out of sight. Josiah walked part of the way with a one-armed soldier headed home to Fredericksburg. Worried about farming, one wing shy, as a young soldier put it. Josiah saw grit from afar of what was left. Lots of old buildings, tired, had taken to lying down. The home place stood still, though tilting a mite, the porch swing long gone, screen door hanging loose. But it was home. Seemed to be cool on the porch. He felt light in his limb as if a weight had been lifted off. 
Well, Lord, you called. I come as far as I can. Now I'm waiting for you to take me the rest of the way. Isaiah pulled up an old ladder back chair. Lord, his bony frame down, held his Bible in his lap, and commenced his prayer list one last time. All in your time, Lord, all in your time. Mason County Sheriff found an old man sitting on the porch like he was sleeping in the ghost town of Grit. In the top pocket of his black suit coat was a note. This is Reverend Josiah Boinerges. If found, please call Comfort Texas. Mary Ellen Robertson, Lively 309. The same day, the sheriff called. Several black folks came to claim the body and claim his Bible. With amazing reverence, lots of tears and tenderness, Reverend Josiah was taken away. If I may paraphrase that great preacher, James Welton Johnson from God's Strong Bones, I'm sure Jesus took his own hand to wipe away Josiah's tears, smoothed the years from his old weathered face, held Josiah in his arm, and whispered, well done, my child, well done.